Let me introduce you to my side yard project. Hi. <laughs> hey, um, it's me. So, I thought, instead of me trying to tell this video, yeah. you should tell it. About what? Just our side yard and what we're doing <laughs> and what we've done. So I want to hear your, your side of the story and then, while she's sleeping, and then I'll tell my side of the, the screwed up fence, but anyway. Um, lots of digging. Yeah, we had to... We had to dig down, what, seven inches? eight, well... Seven or eight inches? Seven, eight inches. And make sure that the angle of the yard slopes away from the house so we don't have flooding. Um, and it was, yeah, pretty time intensive digging it because it's clay dirt. It's very hard. Um, and we kind of started when it was still, the ground was still a little frozen. So it took a few weekends to get it all dug out and haul that dirt out. And then, yeah, you worked on the gate portion. Yep. And then, yeah, I think the biggest thing was trying to keep our dog from escaping. Yeah, true. We had to <laughs> so do making a lot of makeshift. We had to do makeshift fences. Uh, yeah. With stuff. But why are we doing this? Why are we putting rock all the way down through here and then doing pavers? Because he sprints up and down the fence and that's really the best solution I found. Um, he relocates any other kind of gravel um, just from peeling out so fast trying to catch the squirrels. And in the rainy, wintry months, this part of the yard is in the shade and so it's just mud and he yeah just digs the grass out and so yeah we needed something that would stay put and not get caked in his paws and be tracked in the house um yeah so what are we doing here well i came up with a pattern i wanted it to look organic um, and so there's lots of different colors and shapes and then yeah just came in um, hauled a bunch of I forget what this was called it's like asphalt paper base right but it's like broken up asphalt yeah. isn't it uh, no this is just broken up concrete crushed okay concrete. okay um, an expensive way to do it and brought that in you use the, what was the big machine to it's tamp it like down? A tamper. Um, yeah. Yeah, motorized tamper. And yeah, just had to press it in and yeah, get yeah. it, get it kind of angled again because we had a pretty lumpy area over here. Um, and then once we got all that down, it's a matter of, yeah, putting the sand down. Uh, doing the screen with the PVC pipes in sections. So we started over here. Um, we actually started without the gate up so that we could get all this level and not have to work around the fence. So started over here kind of at the, the wall of the house, laying my pattern and just kind of worked our way this way. Um, it looks amazing. And yeah, it's just been section by section. Trying to once again keep Dasher out of the leveled sand <laughs> and other little critters. Um, and then you've helped a lot with cutting the pavers so we could get around things like the gas, the gas line and the gate and then the angle over here by the fence. <laughs> I've got this kind of stair step design, so it's not just a rectangular pad of pavers. So it's working out pretty well. This lines up with the gate. 
Um, so we can if we want to do some papers off that. I haven't decided yet, but I'm working on getting the, the angles in here. So then I can come back in and um, fill in the sand and get it leveled and then start finishing up the pavers. Nice. But I love this part. Yeah. Just the done. creation and making it look pretty. One of the reasons we had to dig all the stuff out is because our gate wasn't wide enough to get a bobcat back here, an excavator, a skid steer, and my friend Terrence has one, has has one, and came over, and we couldn't get it through the gate. It wasn't a 36 inch wide gate. So what we did is we decided that, um, we decided just to take our fence down and rebuild it and make a 36 inch wide gate. But by then we had already dug out most of the dirt. And so anyway, so had to rebuild the gate. I'm 53 years old and just now learning that uh, pressure treated lumber is garbage. So um, in Colorado, because it's so dry out here. So I don't know if you can see the gap between the f yeah it's just here's what happened i pulled all four cedar posts out should have replaced them with cedar posts but i thought oh, i'll go cheap and do pressure treated so i did pressure treated pressure treated and then two pressure treated over here and if you notice they are twisted yep so they are super twisted now, they weren't twisted when I put them in. This one twisted the most. And then this one's a little twisted, but not as bad. I was told that you're supposed to, if you use pressure treated in Colorado, let them sit out on a flat area for three weeks and dry out. I didn't know this. Anywho, this one bowed so far out and twisted I had to take it out and that's after I rented a an excavator not an excavator a um, tamper and tamped all this whole area down so I was miffed I came out so it was leaning forward past the others and I'm like uh so I, I literally just had to dig it all back out and redo it but I did it with cedar and it's straight I even nailed it screwed it into the other posts so anyway so um, so this one's cedar. Should have done cedar all along. But, hey, I'm a DIYer, not a pro. And I do believe in hiring pros, but also believe in saving money. So, but yeah, uh, it looks great. It's fine. Uh, this one's a little, um, a little twisted as are these two a little bit, but not too bad. And so what I did on the outside, and I want to thank um, Home Renovision. I forget the guy's name, but um, anyway, sorry. I watch your channel all the time. Can't remember your name. Anyway, but I know your YouTube channel name. Home Renovision gave me the idea of, let's just go here and I'll show you. These cedar slats are put on with uh, brad nails and so you can sort of see that here and over time the wood will just kind of engulf those and it'll look like there's there's no screws whatsoever or no nails and they're held on with a loctite um, glue on the other side of the wood so they're glued and nailed and fortified because our dog loves to hit the fence at like 90 miles an hour chasing squirrels and the squirrels love to go from here to the roof of the house and back down and down the fence line so we've probably been working on this paper project for the last six months on and off and we are nearing the end of it it, I, 
a chair. Pull up a chair and have a seat. I had thought about filming this whole entire process, but I didn't want to. Because I'm lazy when it comes to filming. And this summer, I just didn't feel like filming. So, uh, I could have done a big drone, drone footage, the whole process. It was dirt and mud. We had to shovel it out by hand, and then we had to bring in a uh, crushed paper base. Now, if you're in the Northern Colorado area and you wanna save money, go to the Fort Collins crushed cement place north of town. Actually, uh, off Mulberry, um, they crush cement and stuff. I got truckloads of this crushed paver base for like $17 as opposed to the $30 or $40 that other places would charge. Uh, so if you need, if you need like crushed paver base, go there and, and get your paver base. They also have asphalt. We, that's why she thought it, it could have been asphalt, but, um, they have both and it's cheap, dirt cheap. So, uh, that's how you can save some money if you're wanting to do it yourself. Uh, always use cedar for your fencing. If you're in Colorado, pressure treated as garbage. And those are not my words. That's the guy at Home Depot who said, yeah, you shouldn't have bought pressure treated. It's garbage. You can use them for decks and stuff because they're usually bolted together and some of that is, is dried out, but for the most part, and, it, and they're not gonna move because they're bolted together or warp or twist or whatever. But oh yeah, these suckers twisted like a pretzel. And yeah, I was angry. But it's coming along great. We've got the fence up, the dog's in. He's gonna have a, a runway. Uh, sort of and my wife's gonna put some huge planters we've got these huge planters that are out front but she's gonna put some huge planters kind of back here we'll probably get a couple more little just lounging chairs or just use these I don't know this might become my favorite little coffee drinking space and yeah it's looking amazing I, I love that we can kind of see the end in sight right and I just love sitting here watching my wife do manual labor. <laughs> I love manual labor. And she loves manual labor. So anyway, that's my paper side project. Hopefully uh, I can edit this all down. Uh, my timer says 15 minutes. I can edit this all down to about five minutes, 10 minutes maybe. Um, our daughter's sleeping, so we try to take as advantage of much as much time as we can with projects and stuff so uh what else anything else babe yeah the biggest part is just making sure it's angled away from the house um and that's what started the whole thing and she's doing a phenomenal job making sure the sand and the rock is all angled angled away a lot of tweaking as we go and that's how this whole project started. We wanted to uh, regrade our house because all the water was sloping this way and it was a soupy mess. We had a, an old sidewalk that ran through, ran through here that was like an angle towards our house. So we just pulled all that out um, and then brought in dirt, angled it towards the fence and then realized, oh, let's, well, if we're gonna do that, might as well just do pavers and make it look nice. All her idea. And she's she's ran with the design and the pattern. I, I still can't see the design. I can see the pattern, but I can't see the design. And, I, and I'm a creative. So I love it. And yeah, that's our project. That's our, that's our, how many months? About six months? Got it. We started it last spring. We started it last spring, right? Worked on it most weekends, nights, and yeah, that's it. That's what we've been doing. And uh, I teach video production uh, for a living. And so this past summer, I was just like, I, I don't even want to pick up a camera. And I don't think, I, I think I picked up a camera once or twice to film stuff. But now that I'm back teaching it, I kind of have 
My kids have shoes. The shoemaker's kid never has shoes. The, the videographer's videos never gets put up. But anyway. All right. I'm going to help her go take a nap. Which one would you prefer? She said I could go take a nap. Anyway, I think I'm awake. I had more bacon and coffee, so I'm good. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Um, so just to recap, if you want to save money, do it yourself. You can do it. Look for those cheap places to get concrete and uh, let your wife plan the vision and you do all the hard labor. No, she's doing, all, she's doing a ton of hard labor. Um, yeah. Work together as a team, right? Yep. She said, yep, if you can't hear. What else? Uh, make sure your, your gate is dog proof when he hits it at 90 miles an hour. Oh, one thing I'll throw some of this in maybe towards the end because I have some footage of it is I had to learn how to cut these pavers with a skill saw and a diamond blade. Um, so all these, all these pavers we have cut I did with a skill saw because I didn't want to, I'm too cheap to rent a tile or a paver cutter from Home Depot. Just learn to do it with a skill saw. So yeah, I still have all nine fingers. There we go, 10. Okay, well, that's it. Thanks for watching. See y'all in the next one. Right. Uh, well, you see, there's shadows. Kind of looks like ripples on the pavers. The way the sun is hitting them, and creating some shadows.